The topic of this video is determining whether a relation represents a function. Let's start with what a relation is. A relation is a framework for turning an input into an output. Here's a simple real-world example. The number of kilowatt hours used by a household has to be converted into a dollar amount so that the utility bill can be paid. A relation converts input to output, and it takes many different forms. A function is a relation in which each input corresponds to exactly one output. So let's take a look at some things that are functions and some things that are not. All of the relations in the left column are functions. Let's look at the first one, ordered pairs. All right, so we have three points here, a comma three, c comma three, e comma one. When a relation is written in ordered pair format, the first coordinate, the x coordinate, is the input, and the second coordinate, the y coordinate, is the output. So for example, a is the input, three is the output. A leads to three, C leads to three, E leads to one. This is a function because for each input, there is exactly one output. A leads to three and nowhere else. C also leads to three and nowhere else. E leads to one and nowhere else. This is a function. All right, our next type of relation is a table. A table is a different way of representing the relationship between input and output. In this table, we have three different values, A, C, and E, and on the right, three different values, 1, 2, and 3. But the most important thing to pay attention to in a table is the correspondence, the arrow. For example, A points to 3. That means when the input is A, the output is 3. C also points to 3. When the input is C, the output is 3. E points to 1. When the input is E, the output is 1. Notice that there is no input that leads to an output of 2. This is a function, and the reason why we can quickly and easily see that is by counting the number of arrows that are leaving each input. The number of arrows leaving A is 1, C is 1, E is 1. And since we got 1, 1, 1 all the way down, this meets the definition and it is a function. Now, before we move on to the final two types of relations, graphs and equations, I'd like to quickly go ahead and show you some things that are not functions so that you get an idea of the definition. So let's look at these ordered pairs. We've got capital A leads to 1, capital A leads to 2, capital B leads to 3, and capital C leads to 3. Okay. Remember that the definition of a function is a relation in which each input corresponds to exactly one output. You might notice that the input capital A leads to one and the input capital A also leads to two. For this reason, this relation is not a function because it violates the definition. We turn our attention now to the table and we notice a similar observation. Capital A leads to one and also to two. This is one input leading to two outputs. Therefore, it violates the definition, and this relation is not a function. You might have noticed that the ordered pair and table on the left and the ordered pair and table on the right represent the same relationship. A leads to one and also two. A leads to one and also two. B leads to three. C also leads to three. B leads to three and C also leads to three. All right, now let's turn our attention to graphs and equations. So, a graph is a relation that communicates an infinite number of relationships between input values x and output values y. When I ask students, how many points do you see on this graph? The most common wrong answer I get is three, because three of the points are big and bulbous and labeled, and they really grab your attention. But there are an infinite number of points on any line or curve, and therefore there are an infinite number of relationships between x values and y values when they're represented using a picture in this format. Now, as to whether this is a function or not, there's a skill that I need to teach you called the vertical line test, which will be later on in this chapter. So for now, I'm simply going to say that this line 
is a function because it passes the vertical line test. And this curve over here is not because it fails the vertical line test. Now, with equations, we have an x variable and a y variable. And interestingly, since x can represent any real number, there are an infinite number of possible x values. And for each one of those x values, there corresponds exactly one y value. Therefore, this is another relation that has an infinite number of relationships and happens to be a function. And just as earlier, this equation when graphed gives us this picture. These are actually the same relation in two different formats. So we learned something very briefly here that I will reteach you later on in this lesson. One way to determine if an equation is a function is to graph it first and then apply the vertical line test. Turning our attention over to this last equation, 4x equals y squared, when graphed gives us this picture, and since that picture fails the vertical line test, this equation is not a function. All right, so now that we've learned relations and characteristics of functions, it's ready, we're ready for you to try solving two problems. So here they are. The first one says, find the domain and range of the relation. Determine whether the relation is a function, and we're given a collection of ordered pairs. The second problem says, find the domain and range of the relation. Determine whether the relation is a function, and we're given an arrow diagram. Your job is to be able to determine the answers to all of those questions. Now, let's talk about domain and range for a moment. Domain is a collection of all of the inputs. For a collection of ordered pairs, that would be all of the x-coordinates. And there's a little rule that we agree to follow, which is that we don't duplicate inputs. So for example, if an input happened to show up more than once in a relation, we only list it one time. The range is a collection of all of the outputs of a relation. It follows the same rule. If a value shows up more than once, we only represent it one time in our final answer. All right, so with that in mind, you now have everything you need to solve both of these problems. Please do so on your own. Good luck.